Welcome to the Glow Getters Podcast. My name is Kayla Fahey Arndt, and I'm your host. I teach and inspire leaders to step into their productive selves and find their true potential. I'm a passionate creative and scientist with over eight years of healthcare leadership experience. At age 25, I stepped into my first management role and didn't find the leadership advice I was looking for. So here I'm giving you the tools to end burnout and enjoy a vibrant career and life. Glad you're here to learn and grow with me. Now, on with the show. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Glow Getters podcast or on my YouTube channel, if that's where you're watching it. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I want to talk about how I remember my why, why I love leadership, why I love healthcare. And I'm not talking about like developing your why or figuring out what your why is, but I want to tell you a story that illustrates how I reconnect and remember my why on a regular basis. So, If you're a leader, you know that sometimes the more removed you are from the work, if you're not, you know, right in, you know, the frontline staff, maybe you're a leader of leaders, maybe you're a leader within your peers and you've taken on more responsibility. It's really easy to sort of lose sight of why am I doing this in the first place? Why does this matter to me? Um, And so as leaders you'll learn that over time, you've got to find ways to reconnect with your why. And you're also going to realize that your why changes over time, and that's okay. And you find new ways to figure out and remind yourself of what is my purpose. Sometimes my purpose is this, and sometimes my purpose is that. As leaders, we pivot and it changes daily, um, depending on our audience, depending on who we're serving, So I just want to illustrate a little story for you about, you know, how I intentionally reconnect with my why on a regular basis, not just one time a year or not just when I'm struggling. Got to have tea. Also, did you notice I cut my hair? You know, I don't want to go back to the 2019 Kayla, burned out, stressed out, you know, carving my way through things, you know, climbing up a mountain. But I like Kayla, 2019 Kayla spunk, and so I, I decided to cut my hair. Also, if you can hear, there's one of my fire alarm or my uh, smoke detector in my house keeps beeping. It probably needs batteries change. I don't know if you can hear it, but sorry if you can. Anyways, so here goes the story. So this is one of my favorite books. It's called A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I'm sure many of you have heard of this book. This is my visual for you, and it is a lovely illustrated copy by PJ Lynch. And the pictures, the pictures are amazing. If you're on the podcast, Google, and I will put a link to it in the show notes. Um, Google this book, check it out. It's worth it to get the illustrated copy so you can read to your family or to you. It, it just makes the book a little bit more fun. So when I was in eighth grade, I had a teacher named Mrs. Dosey. Some of you might have heard this story. If you're watching at home, her name, her first name was Irene. Um, So everyone at home say, Irene. (laughs) I know I speak to Irene all the time when I'm driving in the car, when I'm lost, when I'm feeling like I don't know what's going on, I speak to her. Um, And that's because Irene has passed on. But when I was in eighth grade, she was my teacher. I was scared. (laughs) I imagine her and, and remember her as being this like tall, strong, sort of sarcastic, dry-humored woman who I thought, you know, she could she could probably beat you up, um, even though I knew she wouldn't. And everybody was just kind of scared of her, like, ooh, she's hardcore. But we all knew she was an amazing teacher. She was wonderful and brilliant at English. She was my teacher for um, for English, language, art, language arts. Um, I'm trying to think if I had her for history as well. She was a wonderful, wonderful teacher. And one day she left and didn't come back for several weeks. And we had a substitute teacher, uh, Miss Gaynor. Um, I'm sure she's also no longer with us. Uh, but she, I remember the day Miss Dosey came back, Mrs. Dosey came back unex- um, from her leave. That was unexpected for us as students. And she said, okay, class, you know, your teacher, Mrs. Dosey's back. And we heard from the back right-hand corner of the room, just this, like, turn of the doorknob, and it was, like, kind of slowly ominous turn, and in walks Mrs. Dosey, and the woman, who was, like, this virile woman with hair all the way down, you know, past her butt, tall, strong woman, 
she walks in and she doesn't look like that anymore. She's like this smaller contained version of herself. She's got short hair. She looks frail. She looks not well. And she's holding on to each desk as she walks up very slowly and timidly to the front of the classroom. And she sits in her stool, in her chair. It was like a a raised stool behind a podium. And she sits in there. And I can remember thinking to myself, wow, it's like her sweater is swallowing her. She's so small. And one of the class clowns in our class, I'll never forget Mac Wallace. Mac Wallace, if you're listening out there, hey, bud, I'll never forget you. He called out like, do you have cancer? He was so blunt about it. He called out, are you wearing a wig? And I remember seeing her reaction and her eyes just sort of became teary, but they weren't, she wasn't crying. It was more of a twinkle. And, uh, she said, yeah, I do. And yeah, this is a wig. And she showed us. And, you know, I forget if Matt called out again, but somehow we were like, where were you? You know, and she said, I've been at home for weeks feeling sorry for myself that I have cancer and just wallowing there on my couch. Then I realized I love to teach. I am a good teacher. I love to teach you guys. It fills me up with so much joy to be here with you every single day. I missed you. And so I came back to teach. Oh, I'm getting like choked up. And when we heard her say this, it was just like a silence on the room. But uh, okay, we get it. We're so glad you're here. And she still had that sarcastic dry humor, but she was somehow softened. And I'll never forget that. And it was wonderful. And that year, she decided to read us a Christmas carol out loud. I mean, can you imagine? You're in eighth grade, so you're what, like 13? I don't even know. Yeah, 13, 12, 13 years old, depending on 13, 14, maybe. And, you know, your teacher reading you a book. Like, we can read, right? But I think it was something that she could still do, even though she wasn't feeling well. She loved language. And I remember her reading and she was so expressive. She would read the pages with the voices and and imitate Scrooge and Jacob Marley. Ooh, it gives me chills just thinking about it. But that story, the story of Jacob Marley and Scrooge who only cared about the material things, only cared about money. And Jacob Marley coming to Scrooge and saying, hey, like, you need to figure this out before you die. (laughs) Like... It's not good to care about this stuff. And he says, humankind was my business. You know, in different versions of the book, he says, mankind or humankind was my business. Being benevolent and caring about other people, that was my business. Not money, not wealth or greed. And so thinking about Mrs. Dosey wallowing on her couch missing us because she knew that her why and her purpose was to be our teacher, to fill up our minds, to be reading books like A Christmas Carol, to deliver these lessons. And then comparing that to what Jacob Marley said, you know, humankind is my business. I love this book. And I love going to see A Christmas Carol every year at the Guthrie in in Minneapolis, you know, because it's, it's a wonderful reminder that as leaders, as folks in healthcare, humankind is our business. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the day-to-day data analysis. I had to review my budgets, my P&L statements, my operating revenue and expenses, supplies, salaries and benefits today. I had to review FTEs today. And it's just like, it gets monotonous sometimes. You get removed from the actual work and then you remember, I'm in the business of people. Whether it's a patient, whether it's serving a surgeon in the OR, whether it's, you know, being that nurse manager, that nurse leader to another nurse, you know, in my case, being that laboratory leader to a frontline blood banker, whether it's being a mentor to a student, you know, whether it is serving finance by ensuring that, you know, we're being responsible fiscally so our your organization can stay afloat so we can continue to serve patients. Yeah. That's, that's purposeful. And so when I think about my why, I do think of people like Mrs. Dosey who were sick and needed 
folks like me. And I remember thinking, I'm going to cure cancer someday. Well, not at this point, but I've participated in that work through healthcare, through volunteerism. And so when I think about my why, humankind, humankind is my business to add value to other people, to continue to lift other people up, to help other people grow and develop themselves, to be better every single day. So not just knowing my why, but how do I reconnect with it? I read this book. I don't just read it at Christmas time when the story is most popular. I try to read it, I don't know, a few times a year, every quarter. I keep it on my shelf. It lives literally right here. It lives right here. And if you're listening on the podcast, it lives on the middle shelf right here in my bookcase, right next to my desk as a reminder. And that's why I even love this illustrated copy because it's bigger than the the small version, and it's illustrative of that true story of, not the true story, but that story that you can imagine of Scrooge talking to Marley, like, we got to get our stuff together. (laughs) We got to get our stuff together, dude. Remember, it's about the people. So I would encourage you, read A Christmas Carol at all times of the year. Remember that as leaders, our business is a human's to add value to other people, to lift other people up. And to do that, we have to continue to grow and to be better every day because you can't give what you don't have. So I want to say thank you, Irene. (laughs) Thank you, Mrs. Dosey. There are so many people who've impacted my life over the years, and she's just one of them. And I'll continue to share her story and other stories as I share more of my leadership journey. But man, if you are questioning Oh, what does my little impact have? My tr- my small training, my showing up as a leader day to day. I don't even know if it matters. It does. It'll matter in ways you never know because your impact multiplies. You know, Mrs. Dosi impacted me, but now I'm teaching on YouTube to all of you. <laughs> and they might not meet all of you. So, holy cow. Isn't that amazing? All right. Not to belabor the point, but gosh, And I think about this quote I heard this weekend. Sorry about the noise. I got to grab my post-it here. It said, focus more on your character than on your career. Your career will fall in line. So if you're not sure where you should be on your career trajectory, think about the person that you want to be and work on becoming them and being them every single day. And use tools like a Christmas carol to remind you and to keep you grounded about why you're on that journey. All right, everybody, take care. Thanks for watching. And until next time, don't forget to be a light. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. I wanted to let you know about something new that I'm doing. If you could please leave me a rating and review on iTunes or right in your Apple Podcasts app, I would so appreciate it. Each week, I'm going to be doing a drawing and sending an email to a winner just to say thank you with some treats, tips, and a little bit of extras because I really want to get this podcast out to more people and I want to hear how it's helping you, getting feedback about what you'd love to hear about and what you love about the podcast so I can keep doing that. Also, if you'd like to connect with me on a deeper level, check out my website at glowgetterslife.com. You'll find links to my About Me page so you can learn about me and my journey in leadership. You'll find links to my blog, my podcast for more episodes, and to my YouTube channel. And you can also find links to the templates and leadership planners I've created, as well as my free resource library. All right. Thanks so much. And until next time, be a light.